This morning we are going to talk about acquired conscience. Everybody knows about conscience. Everybody knows who conscience is, right? Jiminy Cricket. <laughs> Everybody knows that conscience is Jiminy Cricket. Because it's children, that's how we were introduced to conscience. Or the little angel on this shoulder and the little devil on this shoulder. Conscience, you know, the little voices in your head that tell you what to do and what not to do, what's right and what's wrong. So we're talking about conscience. Acquired conscience is different in different people, in different nations, in different societies, in different cultures. Real conscience, which we all have, is buried deep within us. And so we do not have access to real conscience as a rule because we don't have to, because we rely on acquired conscience. And acquired conscience is just that. It's something that we acquire. It's not one thing in all people. It's different in everybody because they acquire different things. This person goes out to this field and they pick peaches. This person goes out to this field and they pick potatoes. This person goes out to this field and they pick oranges. This person goes over here and they get almonds. So everybody acquires different things according to where they are acquiring. Our upbringing determines acquired conscience. So for example, I had a picture of uh, one time I put on the, on the internet of me sitting playing guitar and I was wearing a pair of brown sandals and white, white socks. And in the picture it looked like black sandals and white socks and someone commented how over the top that was. Black sandals and white socks, that's just the fashion faux pas. You never wear black sandals and white socks. That's acquired conscience. You see, you understand what I'm saying? It's an acquired thing. You'll judge people accordingly. You'll find that you really won't have anything to do with people who wear black sandals and white socks because, or black loafers and white socks. When I was a kid, it was black shoes and white socks. If you wore black shoes and white socks, man, it's like you were just like nerdsville. You may as well have a pocket protector in your pocket with a bunch of pens, and you may as well carry a slide rule with you. You just didn't know anything about anything. And who would have anything to do with a person like that? Other nerds who cared about other things, but not anybody who was cool, hip slick and cool. If you were hip slick and cool, you stayed away from people with white socks and black shoes. That's acquired conscience. You don't have anything to do with people like that. Acquired conscience makes us divide things into right and wrong according to its nature. So what is the nature of acquired conscience? Well, whatever was acquired. If the nature of acquired conscience is, it's very fashion alert. It's very conscious of fashion. Then black sandals, black shoes, white socks, oh, that's no. Straw hats after five, oh, that's a no-no. A white belt, oh, never. White, wear white. White, oh no, no. Winter white is okay, but not white. So Diana could really probably give us a whole lesson on this, couldn't you, Diana? Yeah, it's on acquired conscience about fashion. Some things you do and some things you just simply do not do. Who says? Well, somebody said and it's been passed down, and that's the way it is. And if you're hip slick and cool in the fashion world, you don't do those things. We have that dividing up into right and wrong according to its nature, whatever its nature may be. There may be some other nature with it. You read those kinds of books. You hang out with those. You're a Republican. You're a Democrat. You're a Greenpeace person. You see, it's all acquired. It's whatever we acquire, then that is that becomes our conscience. That becomes what we use to determine what's right or wrong. You meet an interesting person. And after a time, you notice, and you're talking to this person, you really like this person. Very intelligent, very savvy, very witty, very bright, very kind, very nice, just a nice person. And then after a while, you notice the guy is wearing black shoes and white socks. Instantly, you go, oh, man, this guy is off the wall. Look at these shoes and these socks. How could he possibly do that? I thought he was so smart. And your acquired conscience then takes over for you, and you're no longer able to judge. Now, you can't judge because acquired conscience is judging for you. This may be a simple example, but you can make the move over to where you live with this, where you personally will draw the line. White socks and black sandals may mean nothing to you. Then you find, then you find the area that does mean something to you, and you apply it to your own self, because this is about experimenting in your own life, in your own laboratory with your own self, and finding these things to be either true or not true in yourself, verifying that they're not true in yourself, and then making your judgments accordingly. I'm not asking you to believe anything that I say. I'm asking you to test it out. But as soon as we notice the black sandals and the white socks with this interesting person, buffers come into action. And instead of taking him as himself, we see that he has bad taste. He doesn't know how to dress. 
Or we're talking to somebody and we notice that he didn't brush his teeth for nine years. And they're not just yellow around the gums, they're green. And we're grossed out. No matter how intelligent he is, no matter how wise he is, we're grossed out because he has bad teeth. Everybody has something. Or he's got nose hairs, you know, or he's got ear hairs, or she has a run in her stocking and she doesn't care. You know, just bad taste. And so we immediately see them differently. Tradition forms an acquired conscience in us, and it's stronger than individual contact with a person. So we have traditions, religious traditions, political traditions, national traditions. Well, I'm an Italian, and Italians don't like the Irish. The tradition becomes stronger in us than our individual contact with the person. Tradition makes you not yourself. That's really the bottom line. Tradition makes you not yourself. This work is about becoming yourself, finding out what yourself is. and become. Am I spitting on you? Oh. <laughs> He's wiping his face, and I thought, oh my gosh, I'm spitting on him. <laughs> we need one of those things like a saw bar. He's a sneeze guard, a piece of plexiglass. Yeah. He gets so excited, and then he starts slobbering on people. It's a terrible place to be in the front row. <laughs> You know, the podcasters, they'll have to clean their little ear things. <laughs> People who listen to the podcast. So tradition makes us not ourself. Acquired traditional eyes make it difficult to become a real person, make it difficult to become an individual, make it difficult for us to feel free to communicate with everyone. It narrows our relationships with people. I'm Italian. I don't like those people. I'm Jewish. I don't like those people. I'm Irish. We don't like those people. I'm an American, we don't like those people. I'm an Israeli, we don't like those people. I'm a Muslim, we don't like those people. It's insane. Yet, if you will look at the world, you'll see why it is in such a crazy state. Why it's so divided, why no one can understand what anyone else is saying, why no one has any compassion for anyone else, or hardly anyone has any compassion for anyone else, why the rule is insanity. Why we can go to war at the drop of a hat, even if we have to make the hat and drop it. Acquired conscience prevents you from behaving intelligently as an individual. You can see this dynamic in war or abortion protests. I don't care which side of the line you want to be on. I don't care whether it's war protest protesting so that we can have wars. Yes, war is good. We should have war or else these people will overrun us. They'll take everything. They'll rape our mothers and our sisters, and they'll take everything that we have, and they'll be living in our houses, and they'll kill us. They'll put us all in concentration camps. Or whether you're, no, war is bad, give peace a chance. All we are saying is give peace a chance, and whether you're holding up candles. It doesn't matter which side you're on. You have to see that you're making the other side wrong. You're casting everything into this formatory thing of either this way or that way, and there is no way to operate in life, in the reality of life, that way. There is no way to do that. Sanely. It's an insane way to go about trying to do things because it's not that way. There's a middle road. There's a time for war. There's a time for peace. There's a time for love. There's a time for hate. There's a time for strong action. There's a time to back away. And if you're an individual and you're in touch with reality and in touch with yourself, you will know when that time is because you'll be able to think for yourself individually instead of thinking from acquired conscious and all this stuff that has been acquired, all these voices in our heads from the past. Some of them can be very strong. In fact, sometimes it's the only voice we have in our head. There isn't anything. There isn't any contact with our real self. We don't know who it is, so there's just these voices. That's all we've got. We sacrifice individual judgment to traditional conscience. Steve's infamous thing about mob rule, what, what, what a mob does. We all know that mobs are not good things. When, the, when a mob takes over, things go downhill fast. They get very violent. They get very insane fast. And even if the voice of reason comes up in a mob, it means nothing. That mob will run right over the voice of reason. And that's how, pretty much how traditional conscience runs us. You may be the voice of reason. You may have an eye in there that says, wait, it'll be run over by traditional conscience. This isn't real conscience. It's acquired. Honor, tradition, patriotism, all of those things we were brought up to believe in. All of these things make us incapable of direct individual thinking in connection with an actual situation. I'm not talking about theory here. I'm talking about actual situations. Do you really expect to behave in an actual situation the way you imagined you would behave if it came up? Well, if I got cancer, this is what I'd do. Well, if my child was run over by a drunk driver, this is what I'd do. This is how I'd feel. Well, if you've had any experience in your life at all, you must know by now 
that you can't say how you would feel and what you would do. Not realistically. You won't know until that moment comes what state you'll be in, what state that will trigger, how conscious or unconscious you will be in that moment, whether it will be a conscious shock or whether it will be just another mechanical knee-jerk reaction. We don't know. And this is what the work does with us. We find out how much we don't know. And we start to back away from all of our bravado and our speech giving and our ranting about what we'll do and what this is and how this is and how that is. Such a man will not give up his acquired conscience, which is different in different nations. A person who is patriotic, a person who has honor and traditions. For example, the Russians don't like the Germans because of what happened during World War II and World War I and who knows how far back it goes. The Armenians don't like the Turks and the Greeks don't like this one and somebody doesn't like Everybody's got a history. Everybody's got a tradition. Everybody's got a patriotism. Everybody's got honor. Well, he said this about my wife, so I had to shoot him. Was it true what he said about your wife? Well, yes. Well, then why'd you shoot him? He's just telling the truth. No, it wasn't true. Well, then why'd you shoot him? It wasn't true. There's nothing to worry about. Well, I shot him for my honor. <laughs> okay. Do you see how the world is at each other? Where people are at each other's throats because of this? Because of patriotism and honor and tradition? The Russians don't like the Germans. So Rex is a Russian and Jess is a German. And so they're, they're Russian and German descent. So Rex is hanging out with Jess before he finds out he's a German. And, and uh, Rex really likes Jess. He says, well, Jess is really a cool guy, you know. Rides a motorcycle. I ride a motorcycle, you know. He, he's got a wife. I got a wife. He's got kids. I got kids, you know. We, we like the same things. We both like going to the beach and scuba diving, you know. We, we like this and we like that. We really have a good time together. And then Rex finds out that Jess is a German one day. Suddenly he's no longer able to think about all of the things he shares with Jess. He's now only able to think the Germans tried to kill us and wipe us off the face of the earth during World War II. They tried to destroy us. They made a pact with this agreement they would never attack us, and then they treacherously betrayed us and turned their backs on their agreements, and then they attacked us. They just waited until we had our guard down, and they sneakily, slimily did this and did that. I can never trust him again. You see how that acquired conscience stands in the way of reality, of you with another person. Good. That's what I want you to see. The work teaches that real conscience is the same in everyone. It also teaches then that through real conscience, agreement is possible. As we can tell, we cannot agree in this world. Are you ever going to get the Arabs to agree with the Jews, the Palestinians to agree with the, the, the Israelis? It's not going to happen. They can have peace talks until Hades freezes over. It's not going to happen, people. How do I know it's not going to happen? What well, hasn't happened for thousands of years? What's going to change? Suddenly there's going to be a shift. The moon and the sun are going to change places. And then that's going to happen? Yeah, okay, I'll believe that. When the moon and the sun change places, then I'll believe that the Israelis and the Palestinians will get along. But it won't be for long because when the sun is where the moon is, this place will burn to a cinder in a couple of nanoseconds. So it won't matter anyway. My point is there can't be any agreement in acquired conscience because the Palestinians and because the Arabs and because the Israelis are all thinking about their past and their patriotism and their traditions and this and that, they can't be there. All of the acquired conscience is dictating all of their thoughts and feelings and actions. They can't be there in themselves with real conscience and find anything to agree about. But the work says that real conscience is something that everyone has. It's the same in everyone, and through it, agreement is possible. Acquired conscience prevents further development of the human race. Acquired conscience prevents further development of the human race, period. You can see we cannot develop with acquired conscience. We cannot develop beyond where we are. This is it. This is as good as it gets. Oh, it may get a little better, but it's not going to get enough better. And it's certainly not going to get enough better fast enough. To get into contact with real conscience, we must become more conscious of our mechanical reactions. Oh, I knew you were going to bring up something about work. I knew it was going to cost me something. I just knew it. I knew this was too easy. If we, you were just going to give us the blue pill or the red pill, fine, I'll take the blue pill. I want real conscience. Forget about acquired conscience. Give me the pill. I'll take the pill. That'll get rid of acquired conscience. Then I'll only have real conscience. Then we'll all agree, and then things will be great. But it doesn't work that way. You have to start to become conscious of your mechanical reactions. Oh, make him stop. And it's always make him stop. It's never okay. Suck it up. Let's go. We've got to do this. It's make him stop. Isn't there another way, an easier, softer way? 
Yeah, there's another way. Go back to imagination. Go back to the world you left. Go back to being who you were. Go back to doing what you did. Hopefully you're not willing to do that. Hopefully you've developed enough valuation for this work and for what it brings you, for what changes you have had in your life, for the difference that you feel as a person, for the difference you see in the way you behave in life, for the difference in the way that you can do or not do things. Hopefully. Acquired conscience is always connected with self-love, which puffs itself into vanity, duty, making difficulties based on prestige, tradition, honor, and nationality. Jess, you're a teamy. You've got to win. You've got to succeed. You've got to achieve. You've got to be number one. You've got to try harder. Be tough. Stand up and take it like a man. Now get out there and go, 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 go. Okay. And this is passed on for generations, people. Steve... You got to make a lot of money. You got to be successful because you can't trust anybody and nobody's going to take care of you. You got to take care of yourself. And so, and don't trust anybody. Whatever you do, don't trust anybody because they're all trying to get the money you're trying to make. We've got all this stuff. How could we possibly make it? Well, we got to start to shed some of this stuff. We've got to start to get rid of it. All this duty, vanity, making things difficult based on prestige. Think about that one. We make people's lives difficult. People make our lives difficult. Go to any government agency and notice how difficult they can make your life based on prestige. Little bureaucratic mm. rats making your life difficult because they can, because it makes them feel more important, because they're in a dead-end, do-nothing job that they hate. They're not able to help anybody. They, they got in there to help people. They really did. There were a lot of people who got in there to help people. I learned this when I was working for the police department. These guys were good guys. They get in there thinking, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the streets safe. Get the bad guys off the streets. Let's make things right. You know, let's make this a nice, happy place like Mayberry, RFD. You know, these guys went in there like that. They went in there like Andy, the sheriff in Mayberry. And all of a sudden, they got just tied up and strangled in red tape and court and this and that and lawsuits. And then they got bitter and then they got crazy and then they got disillusioned and then they got burnt out and then they got stressed out and then they got nasty. And then it got to the point where you don't want to call 911 unless your life depends on it because the police may treat you worse than the criminals. And this from people who were brought up, hey, the policeman is your friend. Well, I wasn't brought up that way. I was brought up in the city. The policeman was your friend as long as he was on that side of the street and you were on the other side of the street and you had nothing to do with each other. Anyway. More tradition, more stuff, more acquired conscience. And that's all that is, is acquired conscience. Self-love incites continual antagonism, war, violence, and the like. This is why the work emphasizes false personality, invented things, false behavior carried out in the name of the meaningless. It's like the Hatfields and McCoys. The Hatfields and the McCoys. We all know the story. You don't know the story about the Hatfields and McCoys? Okay, well, your husband will tell you later. You know the story about the Hatfields. And, okay, the husband will tell you later. The, the mountain people who fought for years and years and years, the families fought in bloody feuds, and, and the newspapers made a big deal of it. How old are you? 38. 38. It's amazing to me that someone can live to 38 years in America with television and radio and books and schools and people and not know about the Hatfields and McCoys. It's amazing. Yet, there it is. Nothing wrong with it. In fact, it may be good, but it may be bad. I don't know. I guess it depends on you, doesn't it, whether it's good or bad. At any rate, the Hatfields and McCoys, one meets another and finds friendship until he finds that it's Hatfield. Then he's got to kill him. That's the only choice you have. No choice. That's it. You've got to kill him because you're, you're a McCoy and that's a Hatfield and that's the way it's got to be. That is insane. That's acquired conscience. The fight ensues. The individual understanding is sacrificed to traditional conscience. What you had, an individual understanding with a person, is sacrificed to traditional conscience because you find out who that person is, what their last name is, who their family is, what their family did, or whatever. We must learn to see that we've been fools, that we've made mistakes, without always trying to justify ourselves and get back to where we were socially. We've got to learn to see that we have been fools, that we have made huge, gaping, ridiculous mistakes, without trying to justify it. And without trying to get ourselves back in the social standing, good social graces of other people because of it. Because that's really what the justification is about. It's not really for us. It's for them. Why is that? Well, you know that you can do a stupid thing at home in private. But you do that very same stupid thing out in public, and it really hurts. It's okay in private. But in public, it's not. Because we are more interested in what other people think of us than we are in what we think of ourselves. That's acquired conscience. It's a deadly thing. 
Quiet conscience is turned outward, and it's only distressed when it's made a fool of in the opinion of others. Remember the time that uh, you came over to my house and you were wearing your new silk underwear? He was so proud of all oh, this stuff, this silk, this silk shorts is what he thought they were. Feels so good, you know. It was a hot summer day, and just felt he was so happy that I turned him on to this silk underwear. And I said, Steve, man, he's always walking around his underwear. Comes over to my house, just out in broad daylight, walking around his underwear. I said, Steve, man, that's underwear. He goes, It is. I said, Yeah. He hauled back to the truck, jumped in his truck, raced back home to put some pants on because he felt like a total fool. It was so funny. You remember that? Gosh, that was funny. And that's exactly what I mean, you see. We're run by what other people think. Now, if you were comfortable and if you were happy, well, so what? So what that it's underwear? Yeah, it's underwear. So? Feels great. I'm running around in my underwear. You ought to try it sometime. You know, it was like this guy. He's uh, he's really bitter, bitter, cold. Uh, Hibbing, Minnesota is where this was. Hibbing, Minnesota. Have you ever been to Hibbing, Minnesota? Man, it's cold. It is really cold in Hibbing. And it's probably the colder than in Canada, which is like you could hit Canada with a snowball from Hibbing. This guy wore one of these goofy hats, you know, with the flaps, the ear flap things. And his wife says to him, now wearing that thing, you're going to live. People are going to think you're an idiot. He says, well, that's OK. I'll think they're an idiot for not wearing a hat like this in weather like this. That's the difference between acquired conscience and real conscience. See, real conscience is like, look, this makes sense here. This hat makes sense. I don't care how it looks. It keeps my ears warm. It keeps me warm. I'm alive. My ears are not turning black and falling off like all these other people who can't hear a thing because they have just little holes in their head and little black marks where their ears used to be because they didn't wear those hats with flaps. You tell me who the fool is. Real conscience is turned inwards and has little to do with outwardly turned conscience. As long as our lies come off well and they're well received, it won't bother external conscience. If Steve could have convinced everybody that they were really shorts, it wouldn't have been a big deal. You see that? If he could have got everybody to wear those shorts, you know, if everybody was wearing those shorts, it wouldn't have been a big deal at all. He would have been making a fashion statement. He'd been a leader in the fashion world. But because he couldn't, because acquired conscience made him run back to his truck, jump in the truck, and drive home, ah, and get some pants on. That is a great memory, isn't it? <laughs> That's one of the things about spending so much time together having been together as a group for so many years, is that we've got a lot of dirt on each other. And it's good. It's good to have a lot of dirt on each other because it helps all of us to move more toward real conscience and away from acquired conscience. It helps us to make a choice. Look, I'm going to be here for the duration. Am I going to hang on to this or am I going to hang on to this, which is more important and more valuable? Am I going to make progress or am I just going to make it hang up here with this old thing? Internal conscience will know you lied, even if external conscience pulls it off. You lie somewhere, you pull it off, and everybody believes it, everybody, but internal conscience knows that you lied. Whereas external conscience is satisfied, hey, worked. External conscience is what politicians have. Internal conscience is what they have to sacrifice to be politicians. I know that's a broad sweeping statement, isn't it? And I'm sure that there are politicians in the world who have real conscience buried, just like all the rest of us do. Awakening of real conscience undermines false personality. All of the pretenses, the facades, the external appearances that we spend so much time building up, keeping going. All the time we spend, all the energy we exert in keeping the pretense and the facade up so that people never really know. How much time you spend in the morning putting makeup on? Uh, so much time in the morning. I spend so much time on Thursday morning putting makeup on so that I can look like I don't look, so that other people will think something about me that isn't true, that I don't have any time to meditate. Think about it. That's really what that is. That's really the choice that acquired conscience is making for us and false personality is making for us. Finally, if we continue to make right effort, the work becomes strong enough in us to begin to dissolve us Yes, this work is about dissolving us. We need to be dissolved because what has grown around who we really are is all false. It's, but, but, but not all. Some of it must be good. Well, don't worry about it. If it is, it'll stay. You pour the solvent on it, and what dissolves will be what's not real. And that's what this work is designed to do. And that's what this is about. This is about dissolving ourselves with the solvent that the work teaches us how to make in our own laboratories, in our own test tubes, 
And we pour it on ourselves. Nobody does it for us. Nobody, you don't have some teacher comes and pours it on you. Okay, you're next. It's not like uh, um, dominoes and patrios and, you know, and padres and, you know, and espiritus and santus and hair stick out your tongue and there's the magic wafer and now everything is fine. It's not like that. You have to do this yourself. This is something you have to do. And I don't mean to be making fun of Catholics because I was born and raised a Catholic and I have a lot of respect for a lot of Catholics. I had some great priests who never molested me. I never had a priest molest me. I had a great experience in the choir, you know, the boys' choir. I had some great nuns who taught me in grade school. And I knew some great Catholics. I used to listen to Bishop Fulton J. Sheen, you know, whenever, whenever he was on television and got a lot of things out of what they said. So I don't have a problem with that. So it's okay with me. What I'm saying is, is that no one's going to do this for you. This is something that you do for yourself. And this work gives you the tools to do it for yourself. And it gives you the directions on how to do it for yourself. And it tells you what you will get from it. And now you walk into this with your eyes partially opened. Partially opened because you can't walk into this with your eyes wide open because that's not going to happen for you. Not anytime soon.